So. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. This video is being entitled QPAC Update. There has been a lot of people wanting more information on the QPAC, so I'm going to take the time to give a brief explanation of the QPAC, its functions, what it's designed for, and why it is the most powerful contract that I have ever put together out of all the contracts I've ever done. And I've been doing contracts for quite some time, since the early 90s. I've been writing contracts. So I'd like to say I have a little bit of experience. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the QPAC has at least nine different aspects of it. It's an express trust agreement. It's a pure trust agreement. It's an implied trust agreement. Now, if you don't understand what any of this stuff means, look up the legal definition for each. It is a special relationship trust. Again, these are all legalese where it express, express trust, implied trust, pure trust, special relationship trust. It is also a bond. The bond value is $100 million. It is also an emancipation of a minor petition. Because the arbitrator sits as a judge between the parties where the parties agree and they give the arbitrator the power, the judicial power of a judge, then they can petition that court because the arbitrator and the two parties create a court known as the People's Court. The parties have agreed to have their matter heard before our form. Okay, and anyway, understand People's Court, all those other courts, uh, Judge Judy, uh, Divorce Court, all of those are arbitrations. Okay, but they're still called courts. The law says that that is a court. When the arbitrator has a hearing and they make the issuance of an award, it becomes an order of a court. That being the case, courts in equity have exclusive jurisdiction over the estates of minors. Well, arbitration recognizes equitable law. Take a look at Title IX, which is the arbitration code or act. USC, Section 1. So the arbitrator can issue the emancipation of a minor or remove minor's disabilities and order the complete surrendering to your possession of all of your securities, assets, possessions, properties, and so forth, and remove the shackles of the voluntary servitude by disaffirmance of prior contracts and prior agreements. Then those are just to name a few of the things that the QPAC does. The QPAC is very detailed, especially on the issue of minor and explaining about the minor estate and the infant and the infant account and the assets and the properties and how you have a right to gain access and control of your property. It includes all the information that was in the set pack, but we've added the information about the infant estate and we added the bond information and we've added the special relationship trust information, all for your benefit. Now, what you do is you contact SACCOM, you go to the website, SACCOM911.com, you look at the information concerning the QPAC, you select buy now, you pay the fee for the QPAC. SACCOM receives it, then they send you a copy of the QPAC. What you will do, now we've added a new feature, is you will send it back to SACCOM through the email. You'll put your electronic signature. If you don't know what electronic signature is, Google it, electronic signature, or electronic signature example, and you will see what an electronic signature is, and that's all you have to do is type your name with that symbol in front of it, and you send it back through email to SACCOM. It's a whole lot quicker than the mail. Save yourself about three days. Then what SACCOM will do is they will take it and they will mail it to the other parties. That way you have a third party mailing it and you'll receive your proof of service. Now what happens is SACCOM waits the 10 days after receipt of the mail by the opposing party and they will send out the notice of fault, opportunity to cure. Now, a lot of people say, well, they sent me a uh, proof of service, and it doesn't have a tracking number. Ladies and gentlemen, by law, with arbitration, you don't need to send out things certified mail, and you don't need 
uh, anything with a tracking number. All you need to do is provide proof that you mailed the other party. That's why we're letting SACOM do it, because they're going to verify that they mailed it. They're going to verify that they sent it through the post office using the metered stamp method to prove that they did that. There will be a receipt. It is our hope that you'll receive a copy of the receipt. You'll receive a copy of the proof of service for each of the three mailings. We will send them a notice of fault opportunity to cure after we send them the contract, and then 72 hours after they receive the notice of fault opportunity to cure, they will receive the notice of default intent to arbitrate form. And then right after that goes out of This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. At the exact same time the opposing party is notified, you will be notified. You will receive the same information that all the parties have been served, and you'll receive instructions. Now you can proceed to arbitration. You'll receive the support at saalimited.com email address, and you will be instructed to follow the instructions at saalimited.com because there is a separate fee for the arbitration process. This is only the first part. We split it up and did not include the arbitration, as I stated before, because many people simply could not afford it at the time. Okay. Let's finish talking about the fat pack. The, um, the thing about the electronic signature, that is new. And so what you're going to understand so that everybody and their grandfather are on the same page, the members of SACCOM will be going over this video so that they'll be following the same steps so that you all are on the same page with them to make sure that everything is being done in order and by agreement. Okay. By sending it back to SACCOM via email, you cut out all of the possibilities of it getting lost in the mail or somebody making a mistake. You don't have to sign anything with a pen. You don't have to print up any papers because it is a lot of papers. And you don't have to worry about size and letter size. It will all be the same. What I want to caution everybody, a lot of people have been, sorry, I can't tell anybody what to add or put in their contracts, but a lot of people have been creating their own contracts. And I'm looking at some of the, I'm sorry, let me, let me say this, some of the stuff that they're putting together, and they have no concept of what a contract is. They have no idea how much they're stabbing themselves in the foot. Leave the contract alone. Just edit the spots that you're supposed to edit. If you don't know what you're supposed to edit, follow the instructions on the QPAC itself. All of the sections that are in yellow, you're going to have to delete. One person left the instructions on his QPAC. Excuse me? The instructions that specifically tell them to remove this section, they left it on the QPAC. That doesn't make any sense. All the other highlighted areas, and instead of move, removing the highlights by going on Google, how to remove highlights, uh, yellow highlights from Word documents, instead of going on Google and just Googling that, they left all the yellow highlights. They did correct and put their name. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to be more professional because this document has so much value, and you're spending your money for the document. I'm believing that you would want to do it right the first time, because once it's done and once it's sent to everybody else, the amendment, you can't amend it. If you amend it, you'll have to pay for the service all over again. So you might as well do it right. Now, a lot of people are taking a year to send us certain documents, not because they don't have the funds. It's because they'll do it when they get around to it, because they want to read the document. There's a program called Natural Reader. I forgot the name of the website, uh, but just go to Natural Reader on Google and just type in Natural Reader and just put the number 15. So Natural Reader 15. By doing that, you'll, it'll give you the website for Natural Reader, and you download the free version, and you can listen to the contract. You don't have to read it. It is a lot of reading. Sorry, I had to sneeze and didn't want to do it into the phone. I know how you know, sensitive your ears are. Now, the QPAC is written as a catch-22 because 
their government. They have to respond. They cannot refuse to respond. And because they're custodians over the account, remember, a minor account means an account that is being overseen by a custodian. You ask them a question, they don't get to ignore you. They must respond. You ask government a question, you have a right to petition for redress. They must respond. So that takes care of the first requirement of a contract where a party has no other option but to respond. You see, the law says that a unilateral contract, the other party must be obligated to respond. So that takes care of the first thing that is necessary for a unilateral contract. But this is an implied consent contract, as we spoke about on the other video with the incarceration uh, partial success. It's an implied consent contract because any act they perform... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Any act they perform that's a condition of the contract, the agreement between the parties, is implied consent. It is agreement. They don't have to say anything. They don't have to do anything other than one of the acts, and they have agreed to the entire contract as a whole. Okay? What we're trying to do is make sure everybody understands that I promise you they're going to be changing the Federal Arbitration Act because they cannot leave this act as it is because too many people are going to take advantage of it. And it's going to hurt the entire system, so they're going to have to step up and change it. They're going to try to make the Federal Arbitration Act retroactive. It's interesting that the QPAC specifically has a clause in it where the parties agree that even if Congress were to make the Federal Arbitration Act retroactive with its amendment, that the QPAC as it stands applies to the Federal Arbitration Act as it was at this time, not as it is in the future. Okay, we put that clause in there specifically because we anticipate that they're going to try to make it retroactive, and I'm sorry, everybody and their grandfather, that they didn't even think of making it retroactive. It is only because of my saying it that they will even come up with the idea. The only problem is, if I keep it to myself, and they make it retroactive, and I don't tell you guys that there's that possibility, then you wouldn't know, and they would make it retroactive, and then you would be stuck. So this is my saying what I'm saying. We're doing everything in our power. We have a... a you have 60 seconds remaining. We have a couple of arbitrations that are in default. We're going to be using those funds to hire a law firm to help with your process. When I say we, I mean me. Okay. Some of you I'm going to personally contact, and we're going to personally assign your arbitrations to attorneys to help with getting it confirmed. Well, I will let you know about that when the time comes. Do not contact SAA. Do not contact SACOM because you won't get a response regarding this. All right. Have a good day. Have a good life. Have a good night. Have a good – hopefully this information was beneficial. Bye.